Eagles gathered in their masses Just like witches at black masses Hello and welcome to The Perfect Song. And today, we're going to be looking at War Pigs by Black Sabbath. And this song was nominated by Mike. So, Mike, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about War Pigs? Oh, yes. As you said, um, Black Sabbath, um, it's their song uh, from their second album released in 1970 called Paranoid. Um, And uh, it was really, this was their breakthrough hit. They already had a a pretty uh, significant legion of uh, heavy rock fans. But then they, uh, this song, since it was an anti-war song, a response to the Vietnam War, all that stuff, it became... A sort of like an anthem used by a lot of anti-war activists too so people who'd been listening to a lot of folk music at the time took notice of oh a hard rock song that's actually saying what we want to say and so it became a pretty significant hit and uh influential for uh the genre itself the the hard rock genre especially with its uh eight minute long song <laughs> it's it's an eight minute long song that uh, set set the tone for a lot of uh, bands after, like Metallica, uh, uh, Iron Maiden, and other bands that really sort of like said we could do like these epic sounding songs um, with messages and really use that as part of the genre to create songs that have a message. Because bef- before that, there were so- the songs in the genre really weren't message songs per se; they were just there to rock out to, and that was it. Not that you can't walk, rock out to war pigs, but uh, oh, you can rock out to it. Black Sabbath actually wanted this song as the t- the title of the album. But of course, the record label came in and said, oh, you know, we don't want to like antagonize people who, who love want war. To buy the album. <laughs> so let's let's do the other song, which a lot of people think of as the throwaway song on the album, Paranoid. They uh, they, they they wanted to call it that instead. And, and Sabbath was kind of upset about that because <laughs> the album cover itself was a war pig. <laughs> and so they actually wanted to, to, to do that because that there was the, it was there was the song that they put the most behind the most belief behind. They considered it to be their magnum opus. Um, and so there's a lot to talk about with the song of like its production and like what they did because it it goes from this really interesting uh, drum element, which kind of like sounds like bombs falling in a Mm -hmm. war song and stuff like that. And then they go into this sort of like this really funk kind of sound along with this groove riff. And it's really interesting how they blend in a lot of these different genres into the song. Um, And I can't really talk about the song without talking about the drummer, Bill Ward, who really created a lot of sound with Sabbath um, and what they did uh, with the drums and everything, but also geezer Butler, their, uh, their bassist. And he actually wrote all the lyrics for Sabbath. Uh, mm. at the time so i did i did want to say that a lot of groups have gone in and this has been one of one of sabbath's most covered songs of all time like you know bands like cake foo fighters ween all these different groups indie indie bands have covered this song in their genre so yeah black sabbath extremely influential for the heavy metal genre and um coming yeah 1970, I was actually kind of amazed when I saw, wow, it was 1970 that this was happening. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I compartmentalize genres of music sometimes to periods. Like, oh, heavy metal. Well, that was like, you know, mid-70s, late-70s into, you know. But no, and things were happening all over in every genre. Um, as far as the song, yeah, I, I love the I love the production and arrangement. I think that beginning part with the uh, really setting a tone with the air raid siren sound and the kind of bombs falling. I think that was a decision by the producers. 
uh, of the song who uh, I usually make a note of that, but I didn't. But the producer said, oh, we're going to do this thing in the beginning. And I think the band didn't know it, but they liked it. He said, oh, yeah, it totally works. Yeah, yeah it, it is true. Yeah, the, 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 the producer is the one who made the choice for the beginning and the end of right. speeding up the end um, kind of thing. And it was all artificially done at the end. And then the beginning, they added the siren and all that stuff. And but and they had no control over that. But then they're like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, they liked so. it. They thought, so, thought it worked. Um, I love, again, speaking of the production, I love the sort of really clean and uh, really clean drum sound with the fuzz box kind of really compressed fuzzy guitar with it kind of alternating. Um, and then, yeah, the the... Ch- the the feel changes around that second verse. It becomes kind of more of a funky shuffle or something. And of course, yeah, the solos are great. And Ozzy is fun. And I really love that. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy is fun. Ozzy's great Ozzy. too. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. Ozzy is fun. So yeah, uh, enjoyable song, good band. And I will uh, pass it on over to Al for his uh, reaction. Yeah, no, this is a great song. I mean, obviously, we 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 nominate songs that are almost automatically <laughs> great, right? Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic song, iconic for both its uh, both being good in and of itself, but as Mike uh, mentioned earlier, it was its ability to cross over from a very sort of niche audience of. I guess back then they would have called themselves hard rockers because I don't know if the term heavy metal had been created or any kind of you True. Know, community had built around that idea but and then went into the mainstream although i do believe that it was steppenwolf that introduced the term heavy metal in one of oh, their, from songs. their songs yeah. Yeah. Heavy, yeah actually i just looked it up and oh. <laughs> the term heavy metal first appears in the print in print in william burroughs 1962 oh. novel the soft machine <laughs> okay there you go and they've incorporated um, into their song I like smoking lightning. Heavy metal thunder. It really is that really uh, the deep, crunchy sound that t- uh, Tony Iommi has with his guitar. And as you mentioned, Bill Ward on the drums, Ozzy's great voice. I, I strongly encourage if anyone likes this song to watch. There's like a live version from like Paris in 1970 that you can see on, on YouTube or whatever. Uh, it's uh, fun to watch uh, in part because of what Matt alluded to. It's kind of fun to watch Ozzy. He's sort of not, a, it's hard to describe. He's just banging his head and dancing around to a song. That's all about how war is awful. So it's um, it's all of the Aussie charm right there. We love uh, Aussie. Oh, who doesn't? Um, so yeah, no, I think it's a it's a great song. It's mm-hmm. I don't know if it's my favorite Black Sabbath song, but it's among them. We hope you're enjoying this Gen Explainers podcast. Remember to find us and follow us on social media. Give us a like, a follow, or support us on Patreon. And we'd much appreciate a five-star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. Now, let's get back to the show. We'll get to uh, the question this podcast poses which is is it a perfect song and mike we go first since you nominated i actually think it's a perfect song in the genre okay so uh, qualified yes yeah and i that's the only that's what i'll say i mean yeah I, it, it is not actually one of my favorite songs it happens to be one of my top songs of theirs and i knew that it was the most influential song of theirs um but i do think in the genre for heavy metal it is a perfect song I like that take because I wasn't at all sure I would consider it a perfect song. It isn't one of my favorite uh, songs of all time or one of my favorite songs from Black Sabbath. I think it's a really good song. 
In fact, I like it a lot. Um, but I feel like I think Iron Man is a more enjoyable song, and I think a more compact and and more perfect song. I'm not even saying that one's perfect either. But I think when I compare them to some other Black Sabbath songs, even on the same album, even Paranoid, the one you mentioned mm-hmm. as the throwaway, for some reason, the sort of more succinct, more straightforward, compact type of song appeals to me more for them. I Again, I really like this song. One of the notes I put was, I like the song a lot, but feels a bit too jammy at times. Again, it is a long song, but I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing in the world, but I <laughs> found myself checking my watch a little bit. Um, and again, the talent is there. It's just that for me, uh, it ran a little long and well, it's, it's a great, because, oh, it's ahead. interesting because the, they, they actually put it when it was released in the U S they called it two different songs. There was like a, 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 yes. a sub title thing. Right. They, so there was like a, they tried to make it shorter. <laughs> yeah, they they wanted to allow the radio uh, DJs to stop it early without yeah. being mad at, which I understand. I forget Again, the, I, forget, I forget what the other part was named now. I, I, Luke's uh, Wall. Luke, Luke's Thank Wall, that, right? Hey, Luke's Wall. Yeah, we got to remember again. This song was groundbreaking, like you said, because it was long, and radio at the time was not looking for seven, eight minute songs. You three. Know? They wanted three. They wanted three, and you know they're, they're still not looking for songs that long. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, but yeah, so. The very fact that the song is arranged in the way it is is is, is groundbreaking and, and and very very cool. Um, great storytelling song, great imagery, obviously, really good imagery, and you know they wanted to parallel like you know uh, devil worshippers with these mindless war profiteers and and war mongers. Um, and I like the I do love the little different bits, even though I complain about it being long. I as Alan points out before, I love structure. And I yes. like the way they come back and how it has, how it evolves. And um, yeah, no, again, I don't think it is a perfect song. There's, there's the answer. No, <laughs> but I think it's a great song. That took a long time. To I know there. that was a, that was a <laughs> around the, around the way I was through the woods and finally got there though. No, not a perfect song, but a very good song to you, Alan. All right. Well, first of all, I'll say a few things more about the song, which is one, I think the reason it feels jammy to you is because it its roots are in the jamming sessions that they would do. They were under obligations to like uh, perform nightly a lot. And sometimes they would just jam because they didn't have that much material back then. Hmm. And so the this song grew out of one of those jams. So that's uh, a natural feeling for you uh you love structure i love chaos <laughs> and so i like that aspect of it i like that it's all over the place um and as for the juxtaposition of the war and the sort of satanic thing the original song was called uh, walpurgis walpurgis yeah. yeah and it was about satanic stuff and then it kind of morphed into this thing about war because I think Geezer Butler said something like, well, the ultimate evil is war. And so if we're writing a song about evil, then we're writing a song about war. Um, I don't know how much they were like actual Satanists or they were just like, oh, that's kind of cool because it's so different and like, you know, F you to the current culture. They certainly uh, leaned on that image, I think. Yes. Well, whether they really the were their or band. not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even like Black Sabbath, I mean, it was taken from the name of a movie. Like it wasn't like they were real Satanists. And so they, that's just, uh, I think, a stylistic choice that they leaned into rather than some sort of spiritual belief. Right. That wasn't their like main agenda of making albums and music. We must must, uh, (laughs) proselytize the word of Satan. (laughs) <laughs> Until you play it backwards, then you really know. Then you really hear it. And it just says, eat at Joe's. <laughs> um, By Ovaltine. So uh, the, I think the song is a great song. I actually agree with um, Matt. Actually, I don't think it's a perfect song. I don't think it's my favorite song on that album. I actually think Paranoid is. Uh, yeah. Again, because it's more compact. Uh, it's. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's easier to digest. I don't know. I just paranoid grabs me more than Warpigs does. Yeah. 
And 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 when I said it was a paranoia is a throwaway song, I was taking that from what what was believed they at felt, the time. That's I, what I, they I, felt. I wasn't I wasn't late totally. as such. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. yeah, I think they just recorded it because they're like, oh, we need another song that's more like catchy. And again, yeah, it's a, it's a very simple song, and yeah, it's just more straight ahead and more visceral, which I think uh, I think that is an aspect of Black Sabbath songs or music that I sort of hook up to more than than the more proggy or complicated or however you want to say it aspects. It's, it's, it's actually not one of the genres of music that I actually listen to very much at all. Right. But for some reason, their songs stand out more than most of the others. You know, I, I mean, very few heavy metal bands really speak to what I like. And Black Sabbath happened to be one of them. Metallica is another one. And, you know, there's a, there's a few others, very few, though, that I really, really like. Right. Well, Black Sabbath was one of the first. And, I, you know, when you hear Iommi's guitar stuff, what he yeah. does, I hear every guitarist who grew up listening to this album... I, they oh, yeah. cribbed it. I mean, you can hear it and because it's it's really great and it's really, you know, fantastic. And it, stuff. He did a lot of interesting things because he lost the tips of his fingers in an industrial accident. So yes. like he was forced to like adjust his playing style and he created kind of a sound. I mean, he he was doing it for the sound reason, but also to make it easier. Hmm. Uh, and he he used lighter gauge strings like banjo strings initially because he couldn't manipulate the strings as easily so he needed lighter gauge and then he would tune them way down to make them easier to bend and so mm. that is kind of what led him in that direction but it's a great sound interesting yeah yeah it's great yeah. all right well so there you have it there's our votes and and listen folks if you uh would like to get in on some of the conversations we're having i'm going to do a little Little advertising here. Go to if you're on Facebook, go to the Facebook group, Gen Explainers Podcast Fans, and join. Anyone can join. And you can uh, put in some questions or put some comments about this song or any other song we talk about. And uh, perhaps we'll read it and uh, answer you or say you're wrong or something. Uh, and, you know, again, because <laughs> yeah, we're jerks. <laughs> we're total jerks. <laughs> if you want like to. Come to our we website and be berated. You say we might dance for you or, or answer you. Maybe both. I mean, yeah. they don't know what we're doing when we're typing the answer. They don't Maybe. know what we're capable of. <laughs> but but, but uh, the bottom line is, come on over, join us in our socials. If you do the Facebook, there is there is a Facebook group that's open to the public. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know how we're doing. <laughs> no, don't do that. Just come and say hi. And uh, with that, uh, let's wrap it up. Thanks again, you guys, for coming. Uh, I'm really. Oh, what's that out? Oh, oh, we lost him. We... I'll oh. say bye. All right. I was out, but I'm back. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's say bye. All right, guys. Let's say bye-bye. 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 Right. bye 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 Thank you for listening to this Gen Explainers podcast. Follow us on Instagram and friend us on Facebook. Just search for Gen Explainers and find us on Patreon, where you can support the channel and gain access to extended cuts of the podcast as well as exclusive bonus content. See you next time.